are setting up uh, themselves so here uh, <laughs> for the panel. Uh, what I would like you to do, <coughs> and if the tech people could be, could be helping me out with that, is that I, I would like to be asking from the panel as the first question that what to you has been the most interesting and sort of exciting and novel thing here in Mobile Tartu this year? What has been sort of resonating in you? And you can use that question to be sort of introducing a bit your background as well. So how do you view uh, issues related to mobility and mobility data and mobility analysis methods. But I do the same question for you as well. So there is a board called Menti, uh, and I'm hoping that you would go uh, to an address, this one, uh, with whatever device you have at hand. So menti.com, uh, and you would be entering this code which is there, so 9447 uh, and so on. Uh, and you'll get a board where there are three slots where you can enter, like short words or concepts or even questions which have been the most exciting for you during during this conference. And we'll come back to that, so you have time to be filling it, as now I would like to be asking that question from you. And maybe I'll start with Kimmo, so you can continue, like of course we know already a bit, but what has been the most in interesting for you? Uh, well, um, I'm the first time in this conference, so uh, everything is uh, novel, to, uh, new to me, so, um, well, uh, I have heard something about the urban, urban design that is uh, rather interesting and there, uh, uh, well, very interesting indeed. And, uh, and there I would kind of like to enter towards the, what I have been doing. That taking, for example, the gender and the age, where there are some talks uh, already given in terms of the, oh, oh, how older people should uh, so that is, uh, uh, that is very interesting. And of course, the other thing, uh, which is the big theme, is the mobility itself. But that also, in my view, have or has uh, uh, relation to the, to the kind of social um, space we are. We are social people, so uh, it uh, relates to that uh, strongly. So I think would like to see kind of approach towards that as well. But both those are most fascinating to me. Yeah. What about Siri? You can also use this opportunity to be saying a bit of your background if you want to be still sort of informing the audience, particularly perhaps online, who hasn't been seeing you earlier, uh, so who you are. But, but what has been most, yeah. most interesting topic-wise for you, Siri? Yes, uh, I think the most exciting it was the different sources of uh, mobility data that as the conferences, uh, the first, uh, I think 2008 and uh, some more years afterwards have been more like concentrated on mobile positioning and it is like one first uh, big data source for uh, studying or doing the research on mobility and then comes the GPS-based studies and, and I think four years ago there is also uh, comes more the social media data due uh, on this conference but now I think it is uh, more wider there is like uh, Airbnb data and there was uh, satellite data and there is um, uh, more uh, like uh, uh, mobile phone app based uh, data, which is not like uh, operator or passive mobile positioning data, but the, or different sources. This was I like, uh, I was very surprised that it is so wide and, and also this aspect that uh, this is not only playing this game, the, the data to, to find some methods to do some uh, mo find mobility tracks or something, but they, they, they solved uh, like real social problems or focused on the, on the real topics and then was like uh, uh, give the different aspects to this uh, mobility. And, and you very concrete to be, <laughs> I would like to say, I, I was really amazed of this data, what uh, Andres Tevchuk used yesterday with this uh, uh, 500 uh, American cities to the, based on the GPS data to, to compare the cities on the mobility aspects. Yeah, 
Thank you so much. Really, really exciting. What about John? Thank you. <coughs> well, it's, it's a lot of things that have been striking in you. But start, start literally thinking from the perspective that, that the ones knowing me probably associate me with Uppsala University, but I moved to Oslo uh, for an opportunity for to starting a new kind of uh, orientation that is smart mobility and urban analytics. And that choice actually seems very relevant being at this place because the mobility part and the urban analytics part makes a lot of good sense. And I think one of the big things that I've learned and I actually appreciate very much is the fact that from what you said, CD, when it comes to the, the beginning, it was much more about the mobile phones, mobilities and GPS, this kind of, and then it, it, it has widened over the years. It has also widened to a to include more of the social sides and the planning parts of the mobility and tourism and other kinds of activity. So it becomes a very much more of a holistic kind of approach with, with mobility as the core ingredient. So for me, the most important thing I think is, is the fact that we are seeing so much wider uses of data in a field that makes me happy. Can I? <laughs> is, that, is that good enough? <laughs> That's very good. Yeah. Sounds, sounds perfect, doesn't yeah. it? What about Kai? Hello, uh, my background is official statistics and uh, I was uh, more interested uh, about these sessions uh, yesterday uh, which concerned uh, uh, official statistics and I was really interested and surprised how many different countries, uh, different statistical offices already uh, make some statistics based on mobile phone data. Uh, and other data sources and of course this UN handbooks uh, uh, will be very valuable I, uh, I can imagine uh, for uh, uh, statistical offices uh, but I, I think I, uh, um, as I am also first time here I have to introduce my background uh, more than uh, I work in statistics Estonia uh, already since 1994 uh, and main, mainly my background is methodology of social statistics, population statistics, uh, register-based census also. Uh, uh, um, I have PhD on mathematical statistics, actually I defended in the same building 15 <laughs> years ago mm. when this building belonged to or um, Department of Mathematical Statistics was here in this building. Mm. Uh, and uh, right now I am head of experimental statistics team. We use also electricity data, mobile phone data during COVID period and uh, try to combine different data sources and uh, produce new statistics based on data, different data sources. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll come back to these themes uh, that you raised now uh, in a minute, but, but I would like to show, show a bit what you have been uh, saying on top of these uh, things, which I, I, all agree, I agree with all of you in a way that all of these things have been, for me as well, personally very exciting. Uh, but if you look at what you have been answering, uh, it varied. I, I saw it developing uh, here in the screen as you were putting stuff in. And when we started, uh, or when you started entering, there was open science and social physics uh, were, were top things. And now it has been sort of uh, getting more diversity uh, in there. So there's a lot of, a lot of things uh, which are mentioned here. So still open science and so social physics as, as natural as, as they were one of the last ones here uh, discussed. They are really nicely uh, sort of prominent there. But then there's also questions of segregation, for example, questions of uh, mobility changes, for example, and great ideas even, interdisciplinarity, diversity of topics uh, are, are things that you have found, found interesting. Uh, and I think that that really well sort of pictures how the conference has been uh, for, for me too and what you were saying. I think that we could be diving some of those, those things now a bit more in detail. The panel discussion is about data and methods in particular. And of course, when we do research, uh, so, so one of the, the issues is always data. And one other issue is always that what is our research useful for? And from that perspective, I would actually like to be starting with Kaija, uh, who hasn't given a presentation in here, and, and this kind of idea of using these data sets that we 
are using, whatever they are, uh, in producing alternative statistics, as we call them sometimes, but to be supporting statistical uh, offices and to be gaining some new knowledge on top of that data which is, which is collected, like using traditional methods. And I would like to ask from you that how do you see uh, like what you have now seen and what you have seen through the collaborations between the university and Statistics Estonia as, as the most exciting uh, fields for the future and the questions that you think that uh, mobile big data could be providing additional information compared to the earlier. And the others can be then filling in after Kaya has been answering. Oh. In our case, um, when we started to prepare register-based census, uh, we found that the most uh, difficult problem is with um, uh, concerns uh, the place of residence uh, uh, in population register. And then we started to, because quality of this uh, information is quite poor in our population register, about uh, 20 to 25 percent of people. Uh, are registered in different places and they actually live. And it, it causes uh, several problems, uh, especially uh, in household statistics, because households in register-based statistics uh, uh, is also put together according to place of residence. And then we started to, uh, to find or seek methodology how to improve this, uh, uh, this information. And uh, now we use uh, uh, this kind of um, complex of uh, indices. Uh, it is resident uh, index, uh, location index, and partnership index. Uh, and we use, for example, electricity data, which is uh, uh, hourly electricity com consumption data for uh, our location index. Uh, to find, to, to improve the uh, place of residence of um, households. Uh, and also we had idea to use uh, mobile data uh, for uh, partnership index and uh, location index. And we had only, uh, even uh, pilot study, uh, uh, which uh, Erki mentioned uh, in his uh, presentation. Uh, but of course, uh, problem with GDPR and uh, and uh, privacy, uh, it, it wasn't uh, possible to use uh, this information. But we dream, <laughs> still <laughs> dream that it uh, might be possible um, uh, in some some cases. And of, uh, also, uh, uh, other data sources might be, for example, banks have very good data about uh, people's uh, uh, places of residence, uh, which they don't give us uh, right now because it's bank secrecy. Uh, and um, there might be other data sources to improve this information. So my view is that we, uh, can combine these traditional data sources like administrative registers and uh, uh, and alternative or experimental mm. data sources like uh, uh, private uh, data sources and uh, and to to get more value uh, from these combinations. And when doing like when when hoping to have that? Okay, Gimo had something, so maybe I'll ask this a bit later. No, well, I think. Ask, ask yeah, after I'll, that. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll ask, like, for the researcher community, so what would, be, what would you hope from the perspective of Statistics Estonia that researchers would do to advance your dream? Uh, I think if we, we, we are so small uh, countries that every brain is very important and uh, the cooperation is extremely important uh, between uh, university and, uh, and positum and uh, statistics Estonia and other, uh, uh, other institutions. Uh, uh, so the cooperation is, I think, the main importance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then. Yeah, well, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I wanted to comment, and uh, I mean, Siri mentioned it, that uh, there's a plethora of uh, all kinds of data uh, coming available. 
one, one thing what I saw on that, uh, that uh, uh, map was uh, small data. Mm -hmm. I would say that all data is useful. And the small data uh, also in the sense that uh, kind of uh, uh, in, in the, at universities it's possible to collect data, make, making these kind of game experiments. We have done those, so you can uh, follow in the timeline during the game what is, what is happening and you can uh, follow the inter interactions and all, all those kind of things. That uh, kind of uh, leads me to an idea which I very much like to do is to look at, look, look at the longitudinal changes. Of course, in the statistics data, there you can you can do that. But I mean, also at the more individual level or smaller community level, how they evolve, I think that would be uh, utterly utterly import, uh, interesting, at least for me. And that uh, that what what kind of evolution uh, uh, evolution happens. And that, that for the decision makers would also be rather interesting because the decision makers or policy makers could be rather interesting to, to find out from the research community what, uh, what could be, what is the outcome. Yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe that, or do you want to comment on? on what Kim was? I have the, no, the yeah. Kim was, but uh, I have to comment about or to comment to your question about what this uh, uh, mobile positioning would give to the statistics. But I, I think this is not the new knowledge, but, but then it's, uh, I think that it is important aspect that uh, this time frequency or the interval is uh, quite smaller for this uh, mobile positioning statistics. Based statistics, it means that we can, based on the mobile positioning, can do the statistics uh, for example, monthly basis, not only the yearly basis. Mm -hmm. And also the other aspects, which is related to the Kayas that uh, comment that it is, um, we know the place of residence, but we know based on the mobile positioning data can know also more, more place of residence for the second or mm -hmm. how many residences the people have. But it don't have to be only one or two, it would be much more, more, but we don't know it uh, for this uh, registers or other databases. <coughs> and Kaya, you mentioned earlier on the coffees, like now, Siri, you are referring to, for example, to multilocal living of, of full families, for example, going to summer cottages or other places, but you, you touched upon also kids living in sev or with several parents, uh, that that would be one of the things that might be then uh, become clearer. Yes. It is, <laughs> it is again a problem with the register that sometimes, uh, uh, sometimes uh, it is uh, needed for a, a pa parents that uh, some, some kids go to one school or another kids another school and they try to register close to this uh, school or so kindergarten. So families are split according to register and uh, this is the main quality problem in, uh, in the case of Estonia that we have very many single parent uh, families according to population register and this, uh, this, this uh, has to be solved somehow. Yeah, and I guess that technically it's not like, again, if talking about data and methods, it, it's not a trivial task to be separating those families or like identifying those children who live in several different addresses and so on. So again, I guess that there's a challenge for, for those who are developing the methods to be, to be supporting in, in that kind of activity. But, but of course, there are more and more children who live uh, one week uh, with one parent and uh, another week with another parent, so it is really difficult to... To, uh, to get to know which is their permanent address. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that the statistical, like alternative statistics or official statistics has been in here one of the key themes that has been indeed coming out in many presentations and, and like the potential of, of big data in, in creating those seems to be uh, particularly 
important, of course, in those places where there's no statistical information at all. So, so well done, everyone who's, who's working with those. But then the issue of small data. So one of the other things that we have been discussing on the like corridors with, with different researchers has also been that, that is it, uh, like for example, for, for the issues that, that Kimmo mentioned, so analysis of change and analysis of, of like, well, change over time uh, in people's behavior or so. So can we actually, are we able to, to sort of grasp that with big data, at least with these data sources that are somehow sort of not very robust, like social media data platforms change their practices, they change in popularity, uh, which all the time creates different types of biases that are difficult to understand. And even the mobile phone data that you have been successfully using here and in many other places, there might be some, uh, some challenges of that sort. So do we at the same time as we need to be developing these big data uh, approaches forward, should we be more interested in the small data again, like travel diaries, like GPS mm. tracks, mm. and so on. You, for example, see here in Tartu have been doing increasingly GPS tracking, isn't it? Uh, partially for, for these reasons, or then access reasons for, for the data. I think it uh, came out for more maybe this... Uh, uh, because we didn't have the access or we uh, rain so that the, probably in the future don't have the access for this passive mobile positioning data so much anymore. But I think the both are very valuable mm. because this gives the different aspects. Because based on this passive data, which is huge amount of data, but I think never can get so, so many characteristics for the data or, or asking people something... Uh, qualitative ones, but the small data are more like qualitative and can, can ask different sort of questions, and, uh, uh, but, but small group of people. Mm. Yeah, Kimmo. One, one thing about the small, small data, uh, I would, would like to ask, how much in, uh, in these uh, small data communities or mobility communities are how much are, are these wearables used, like the uh, smartwatches or mm -hmm. even even the rings or what, whatever, uh, uh, to uh, mm -hmm. to collect data? Of course, it would need uh, the consent from the person to mm -hmm. to uh, to do that. But that would be uh, also uh, 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 interesting. I think we are in you know, kind of. Uh, touchy, touchy grounds uh, there because I mean, uh, uh, of course, we don't want to hit to the go to the uh, phase where the big brother watches and uh, things of that sort. But I mean, but that would be at least from the research point of view would be rather interesting, and yet that would be a kind of individual level mm. level uh, 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 thing to. To, to look at because these have the GPS and these have what not. I mean, even even the oxygen saturation and things of that sort. Yeah. Yeah. Any thoughts on this? Yeah. Uh, indeed, I, I fully agree, and I think to some extent we as researchers need also to be a little bit. Uh, sensitive to the need of, of the scientific community, of the um, statistical community and the ones using the data to be innovative in the sense that we create methods and also data sets that provides a legitimate, oh, I can't say the word, <laughs> it's, uh, it's not Friday, it's Thursday, uh, <laughs> that's Friday for you, um, but, but, but literally I'm, I'm thinking for instance not having the unique individual v uh, values of a purchase, but perhaps the share of purchases among something, something, say within a specific realm or among the hundred nearest individuals. So it's something that doesn't uh, disclose the individual, but literally says something. One out of 100 individuals is, is at this moment doing a phone call. Uh, someone in among these kinds of neighbors is doing this. It, it also opens up for, I think, a multitude of more th ways of looking at geographies, because I think we've been concerned 
concerned too much with, with uh, administrative slab of lands. So we, we have something, 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 and that's supposed to be the new version. And then we update uh, a few, few years later, and then we have no way of, of comparing it over time. We've had square kilometers, we would have square hundred meters and these kinds of things. I think a good way of, of moving forward is to have those kinds of units, but populate them not necessarily by unique individuals, but literally saying within uh, a radius or among the 50 nearest neighbors, we have this kind of a composition behavior. And that could be used as a first difference or diff and diff kind of an approach to give something for the future things. And then I guess, I guess text telling us we have very few individuals. We have to be honest what we get sometimes because, of course, the small data could be used for sensitivity analysis to some extent. But if we, are do going, if we are comparing what three people did last year with two people this year, well, we might have with 100% male or something like that. You know, very odd statistics that says something. So I wonder if that made sense. I hope mm. it did. Yeah, but still on the, the wearables, for example, so how do you see the potential nope. of those? Yeah but, I, yeah, but I mean, th that would be something, we're talking from the ethics point of view, that you couldn't, you couldn't use that mm. kind of statistics mm. if you had the unique individual. But if you had something saying yeah. that the average behaviour within or between or, or something, so you could produce an accurate a statistical sort of coordinate rather than going on a county basis and saying within this county there are two individuals doing something. You could literally produce something and then say something about con contextual about the information about where they are. Mm. with no absolute information about what they are. So I think we need to be more innovative of, of providing solutions that are ethically and research relevant mm. that also could be matched to the contextual data of where are they and what, what kinds of opportunities are there. Um. How do you then, then feel, John, for example, now as, as you have been successful in gaining mobile phone data, uh, very detailed, uh, very raw data mm. to your use, whereas in many other cases we have been using aggregated data yeah. or somehow like fully anonymized data, losing some, mm. some of the detail that there would be. So, so what would be, like thinking about the current setting now, uh, which is that we all are being tracked and we all are being monitored with whatever, uh, and somebody has that data. And here we researchers are sort of hoping for access to that data and thinking all the time that, like playing a game of, of sort of cat and mouse a bit, that what do they release and then we try to be using mm. that. Mm. Then it closes, then there's another data source and we jump on that enthusiastically because it provides some uh, geographical knowledge and is valuable, but still it sort of is constant chase in a way. So what, what would be like, would you have some, some recipe based on your, your uh, current work and current collaboration that how, how should we do this work, this collaborative work with those companies mm. who are, mm. they are all companies basically, mm. private mm. companies which yeah. are collecting the data. Yeah. So, yeah. so what, what is your experience and what is your sort of take on this? So how, how should we be addressing this issue? Mm. My success story, if, if, if I can call it a success story for getting hold of, of these longitudinal individual sort of unaggregated data for the Swedish case in one company, uh, is that I did not contact the company in the first hand. I, I, I provided a letter for PTS, uh, Post and Telestudelsen, which is the, the national board of telecommunications, literally in Sweden. And they are the ones that owns all the contracts with all the telecommunication firms. And, and these are where everything is being organized and, and, and played out. And rather than providing a sort of a letter to someone that knew, I, I wrote a long letter stating that we would be willing to work with you to provide analytics for how your phones are being used or other kinds of things. And we're willing to accept any kind of, of, of uh, things you say we will not be able to, to share with you in these kinds of things. So providing them an opportunity to, to, to literally ha get help from us for free if we could be uh, getting data from them about the usage. And anonymously, then this let letter was sent out to all the providers, and then I suddenly got a response. And then we had a meeting, and they started discussing what could you do for us, and we came up with those kinds of solutions. I think in many ways, working that way, there are, I've, I've got a friend now working with uh, e-scooter company Lime, talking about so what can we do for them, and, and in return, they are literally discussing perhaps we can have the coordinates of all the lines, at least when they park or when they are being used. 
And that's a global kind of a thingy. We can do the analytics for optimizing sort of parking or, or shortest route for getting them or understanding these things. So I think, again, we need to be, we need to be a little bit more innovative in terms of what do we know from the skills we have when it comes to geolocation, optimizing routes and whatnot, and thereafter uh, uh, sort of targeting the firms that we think could benefit from our skills and then say, give us anything with a <laughs> smile and, and do a good talk. I think that, that, that was a success story for the mobile phone data that we've got. But, but ne next to that, it has been a lot of ethical sort of concern and works with it. So it, it, it's, not been, it's not been easy, I must say. And mm. of course, everything has been, there are lots and lots of regulations to, to the usage of it. Yeah. What about others? Do you have some, some sort of suggestions for the way forward for, for this access, access challenge or, or sort of stories that you would like to be sharing, success stories like, like John's? Mm -hmm. that, that, that you, well, Siri, for example, has, of course, <laughs> or like Mobility Lab has for long, like for more than 10 years you have been successful, yeah. but then, <laughs> then there were changes in that at some point. Uh, Gimmo, you have been negotiating the data from Delia, uh, which is aggregated data to some extent. Yeah, yeah, so, I, I yeah. can comment on that. Uh, we actually uh, uh, formed a kind of small consortium and we, uh, we purchased uh, uh, data. It was not, uh, well, it was a good deal. Uh, uh, to purchase that data only, uh, I think we we spent something like uh, 8,000 euros mm. uh, for that and they were, we were sharing the cost uh, be uh, between the uh, groups. We made a contract with, with, uh, with them and uh, uh, we tell, uh, we don't give our algorithms, but we tell what we have found out. Uh, mm. So that kind of...